Hello and welcome back everybody to the Food Build Factory, where today we're going to take a look at the Cultist Explorer. That's the guy you can see on screen right now. And as always, I'm going to show you some gameplay in the first part of the video. And in the second half of the video, we're going to take a look at the perks, mutations, equipment and everything else. So let's get right into it. What this character is going to be about is, as you can probably already tell, we are going to play as a one-handed melee character in power armor. To be more precise, we're going to take a look at the Strangleheart power armor. Um, th this kind of power armor I have so far never used before, uh, for the simple reason that I didn't go through with grinding for it. Um, so just in case you don't know, uh, when this item, uh, I want to say item, but it's actually uh, multiple ones, but you get the point. Uh, when the Strangleheart power armor was introduced into the game, uh, it was actually part of the uh, then uh, live uh, vault raids, which were repeatable dungeons, uh, like they were raids, as the name suggests. And yeah, uh, they were definitely endgame content, were pretty grindy, and I didn't really go through uh, with them just because, um, yeah, as some of you probably know, I am mostly a solo player in this game. I, I do have a lot of friends. Uh, who are playing the game, but it's just, yeah, I, I'm quite busy with uh, doing my channel here, and overall, I'm, I'm, I like to server jump a lot, and every now and uh, every then, every now and then, every then, uh, yeah. Anyways, I like to server jump a lot, and so, uh, yeah, generally, I do enjoy this game more as a solo player, and yeah, these wall raids, they were really kind of tough. I mean, as always, you had uh, people who were able to solo them and uh, did them very often, um, managed to really grind that power armor out pretty fast. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm not that kind of player, to be honest, um, as you can probably tell just by the fact which kind of builds I like to play with. And therefore, yeah, I didn't really get the power armor at the time, which is a shame because, um, yeah, when the uh, power armor was introduced, it was very good. So what it does is, once you have a full set of it, it gives you uh, two bonuses. One is that you get area of effect damage around your character, so that enemies nearby take so-called acid damage. So as far as I know, this acid damage is uh, overall poison damage, as far as the game mechanics are concerned. And in addition to that, um, it adds the power armor adds a little bit of poison damage or acid damage to your attacks, uh, no matter if it's melee or uh, or ranged combat or whatever. Um, the problem is when the uh, power armor came out, um, firstly, it its uh, acid damage had a little bit of a, a visual effect going on. I mean, it still has it to some degree, as you can see, nearby enemies have this little cloud around them. But um, what it actually did is uh, when you were attacking an enemy, um, this effect um, visually uh, stacked up, as far as I I'm aware. And this led to severe lag problems when it came to boss fights like the Scorch Beast Queen and so on. Um, this was basically uh, the big issue with it, but in addition to that, it could be quite overpowered as... Um, I, I mean, it's kind of hard to understand or get behind how uh, Bethesda could have overlooked this, but obviously um, damage over time when it stacks can be very overpowered, uh, especially in PvP, which back at the time was a bit more of a thing than nowadays. Um, yeah, th this led to a lot of balancing problems just because, yeah, uh, this power armor could be exploited quite heavily. And, yeah, in typical Bethesda fashion, what they did is they just nerfed the power armor to the ground. Now, uh, they got rid of the uh, visual effect that was lagging the server so much. Which, I mean, that's a good thing. We don't want to complain about that. But, uh, yeah, in addition to that, they just nerfed the damage overall, so it wasn't stacking anymore. Now, there are a few workarounds. Like, I'm pretty sure when they did that, uh, what they forgot were multiple projectile weapons, so shotguns were still very powerful with the weapon. Um, but, yeah, over time they did um, patch that out as well. The only weapon that... Uh, think at least, that still is able to uh, stack these damage numbers up is the um, the harpoon gun with the flashé mod. 
Um, I guess that would uh, mean that other weapons that don't come as multiple projectile weapons to begin with, like laser rifles or plasma rifles or uh, even Gatling plasmas, that can have modifications though, which split up the projectiles would still uh, benefit by by this uh, stacking. But uh, all of that doesn't really matter for one simple fact, which is uh, ever since One Wasteland uh, was introduced to the game, meaning that enemies did uh, firstly level to your character, um, they had higher uh, max levels, talking about level 100 super mutants and so on. Ever since that uh, happened, what was actually going on is, yeah, they also, for some reason, pretty much every high level enemy in this game has a ton of poison, fire, and cryo resistance. So, all these type of benefits, like um, certain legendary uh, weapons that have fire damage, um, then obviously all of the poison attacks and so on, are pretty much rendered irrelevant at that point, just because even if it doesn't stack, the the benefits from from the power armor would still be kind of cool. Um, having just another 25 damage or so per swing um, is just kind of nice. And always the good thing about it was that it just surpassed uh, damage resistance from enemies because it was another damage type. But nowadays that we do have um, enemies with such high poison resistance, it just means that, yeah... This 25 poison damage over 7 seconds is pretty much irrelevant. It, it just doesn't do anything. Um, I will show that off later, and by the way, please just land. Uh, we were nearly finished. We also wield an executioner's weapon, so um, at this point we are looking at 2 to 3 swings to take down a Scorch Beast. But, yeah. I don't know, guys. Uh, should we stick with it? I mean, is he going to land now? Oh, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Nice dodge there. And, yeah. Two power attacks it was. Overall, you can see we still do relatively good damage, but that's more to do with just having a relatively good weapon and very high strength. Very high for a power armor character, at least. Uh, I'm pretty sure we are at 25 um, strength. Yes. So, as you can tell, that's pretty high, so obviously all of our melee attacks are pretty good in general. And, yeah. Um, the Cultist Blade itself got a buff uh, quite a while ago. It's still not too crazy, but, um, I mean, in general, uh, one-handed melee weapons aren't the greatest. But I always liked it. It's, it was always quite fun, and having a little bit of a buff to it in terms of just base damage is nice to have. Um... We do have an Executioner Swing Speed version, as I just mentioned, which also makes this weapon pretty great. Pretty sure i never shown off a Executioner's um, melee weapon before on this channel, uh, which is a shame because lately I just really enjoy them. Um, we are on Custom World, by the way, just because uh, I finally uh, got all the plans for the Strangler Heart, which I forgot to mention in the beginning of the video, is how I now actually got the, uh, the power armor, because nowadays you can buy the uh, plans for the power armor for gold bullion. And yeah, that was also a pretty hefty grind for me. Uh, I know a lot of people swim in treasury notes just because they do a lot of uh, events and so on. But yet again, uh, the way I'm playing this game means I just spend a lot of time farming legendary enemies and just farming experience um, on five different characters. So it's, it's not like I'm having a lot of time you know, doing events and therefore Gold bullion is not exactly something I'm swimming in. Um, yeah, just shoot us here. We do have electric absorption, so um, assaultrons with their head lasers actually just heal us very good, um, very well. Heal us very good. It's not exactly uh, great English, I guess. And yeah, the thing is, I still would have to grind uh, for vault steel and uh, uh, legendary modules in order to craft me a set uh, of this power armor. And just because I knew it was nerfed quite heavily and I didn't really know if it's worth it to me to just, you know, grind uh, for it, I wanted to test it in custom worlds. Uh, which was a good idea in my opinion because I'm now not feeling tempted to uh, actually grind uh, for a full set in standard worlds. 
Um, yeah, I was really let down by the power armor. It's still fun to use, and especially if you're strolling around low-level areas, um, like ghouls up to level 50, for example. They still take a lot of uh, poison damage from your attacks, and once you're fighting those guys, you will see what kind of fun you could actually have with this uh, power armor. But yeah, as I mentioned before, it's just ridiculous how pretty much every single enemy that's over level 50 has uh, like 200 or 300 poison resistance and fire resistance and all that jazz, which yeah renders these weapons completely useless and these effects because they were never balanced to uh, fight opponents with resistances, really. Uh, when the game launched, you weren't really able to do a lot of poison damage or uh, frost damage or whatever. Um, all of the weapons wielding these, uh, these damage types were relatively weak compared to others. Um, for example, talk about stuff like uh, po poisoned arrows on a bow. Which is a bad example because the ball was re re uh, introduced into the game relatively late. But still, uh, yeah, these are effects like 15 poison damage over 3 seconds or so. Um, so, yeah, it, it's not a lot. And um, that means per second you do 5 poison damage. Um, if we talk about the power armor here, I think uh, what it does is it actually adds... Um, 25 poison damage over 7 seconds or so, um, <clears throat> which means, yeah, what, what are we actually uh, doing, like 7 or 8 um, poison damage per second, and these 7 or so uh, poison damage points per second have to uh, go against like 300 armor. I mean, go on and shoot an enemy with 300 damage resistance with a pipe rifle that does uh, 7 damage. You're not going to see the health bar move, really. So that just rendered poison damage completely irrelevant for basically the whole end game, uh, which is kind of a shame. I, s I mean, I still like the, the power armor just for the visual effect and for the looks. Um, always thought they were quite fitting for a um, cultist character. For some reason, I can't really explain why. Um, it's just this eerie, otherworldly vibe. Um, it looks a little bit supernatural. Overall, in general, the, the visuals are quite cool. But that's pretty much it uh, when it comes to this power armor. It, it also has pretty much the highest radiation resistance of any power armor in the game, I think. Making it kind of cool. But really, your uh, main radiation protection from the power armor comes from its inherent uh, radiation damage reduction. Uh, so yeah, radiation resistance in and of itself doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, so yeah, it's cool. You're still very tanky. I mean, that's also a big part of the character here. We do have a ton of endurance and uh, actually have quite a few different endurance perks. And we also have uh, two auto stim pieces. Uh, we do have born survivor at rank 3 as far as I remember so yeah we're pretty much invincible with this guy you just can't go down really um, so overall it's a lot of fun to play this character it feels powerful I mean if you're going against really tough targets you just need a lot of time but it's not hard to do it's just a matter of waving at the enemy uh, wailing at the enemy I think that's a term you could actually use um, but yeah the poison damage was really a letdown. I, I tried a lot of things, um, relatively quickly that is, but um, it was quite apparent that uh, a lot of the things I was hoping for didn't really work. Uh, it was surprisingly hard to find um, relevant info on the power armor, um, which is relatively recent. Uh, most stuff I found was from like end of 2019 or maybe early to 20 or so, but uh, yeah, really getting... Uh, actual uh, content about the power armor from now uh, is kind of hard and that basically should be a big tell to how good the armor is at the moment. Uh, I really hope Bethesda thinks about rebalancing this whole issue of um, elemental damage and especially poison damage or damage over time. 
Um, because it's, it's a similar thing when it comes to uh, flaming attachments, like um, burning uh, capacitors for uh, laser rifles and all of that stuff. Um, the, how's it called, the perfect storm uh, is a similar uh, example where on paper it is a great weapon. Uh, I mean, in addition to uh, doing relatively good damage, being a 10 millimeter auto submachine gun, um, a fast firing weapon that stacks burning damage on an enemy sounds like a very cool idea until you use that thing and realize it's hot garbage. Like, it, it, it doesn't even feel bad just because the weapon in and of itself is capable of doing quite a lot of damage if you are willing to spend a lot of ammo. Uh, but if you're taking a closer look at it, you realize that, yeah, the flaming uh, legendary effect adds absolutely nothing to the weapon. Uh, the only time you will see a benefit from it is when you're fighting enemies that are so weak you basically have to uh, have to be very cautious about not shooting too often to actually see an effect of the uh, of the weapon. So, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure Bethesda won't do anything about this kind of stuff, but um, there's hope. We can all have uh, wishes and hopes for the future, right? Is it worth it to grind for the power armor? I mean, if you have nothing better to do, sure. Uh, it's fun. It's it's definitely something I wouldn't want to miss nowadays, now that I have it. But uh, on the other hand, I don't think there's any kind of gameplay you can go for with this uh, power armor that you wouldn't be able to go for otherwise. And that's, yeah, sadly, sadly the truth when it comes to me. And I was really hoping that the the power armor would open the possibility of a few different builds I had in mind, which otherwise weren't possible. I really wanted to see uh, how it uh, works once you're using stuff like the, the drill or the chainsaw, um, because that was actually the most interesting thing about this weapon, when it, uh, this power armor, when it came out. Uh, suddenly, um, some of the weapons that were absolute hot garbage, think about the Ripper, were interesting because you could actually use them. and. As far as I know, they weren't even too overpowered. Uh, I mean, sure, there were some weapons that could be very overpowered with this um, uh, weapon, but why not just balance things rather than nerfing them to the ground? I mean, it can't be too hard. I I'm pretty sure every single one of you would be able to just think about a solution for this kind of stuff within an hour or so. And while I have no idea about coding or anything, I also don't think it should be unreasonable to um, think that kind of effort uh, is possible in a game like this. Um, obviously, it's easier to just tweak the numbers and so on, but clearly when one wasteland dropped and enemies got 300 poison resistance for no good reason, um, Bethesda didn't really think this through. And yeah, sad story. But... Anyways, uh, especially in terms of visuals, I really like this build. Uh, one thing to note really quickly here is how um, I didn't go for the Strangler Heart uh, skin on all of my power armor pieces, only on two, uh, actually. Uh, that's because, yeah, I think using all of them is a bit over the top. Um, it looks a bit ridiculous, but what I did here is I used um, the US Army paint, on uh, my arms as well as my right leg and only use the strangler heart uh, modification sorry strangler heart skin for my left leg and my torso and the helmet is uh what is it actually a uh, radar pathfinder or so uh, we're going to take a look at it in a second but all of that combined makes it so in my opinion it looks like really one vine grew up your uh, leg and then around your torso I really like this kind of shield on the back here, that adds a lot in my opinion. And together with that uh, bone modified helmet, I really think you do look like a... Yeah, just like you're using an ultraside armor that was modified a little and overgrown, which is really a cool aesthetic and in my opinion the, the sword really uh, matches the whole uh, aesthetic quite well. But anyways, guys, that's enough, and now we're going to take a look at the more interesting stuff. I, I hope you enjoyed the gameplay, and it wasn't too much of a rant, but I just had to get this off of my 
uh, chest. Uh, just because, yeah, I spend a lot of time grinding for this um, power armor and I especially feel bad for all the people who really went through the uh, vault raids and didn't get anything from it because, yeah, they had a little bit of fun with this power armor and then they, it was nerfed to the ground. I can just imagine it was heartbreaking at the time. Um, here, by the way, under effects, we can see uh, what the Strangler Heart does. Uh, acid damage, 4 per second on nearby enemies, and plus 50 acid damage um, to your attacks. So, uh, I was a bit wrong when it came to the numbers here. Um, it's not damage over time on your weapon, it's just flat uh, 50 acid damage. But still, the p my point is pretty much the same. 50 acid damage against 300 poison resistance or whatever is just barely noticeable. It does so little that you might as well just not bother with it. Looking at our mutations here, we do have Adrenal Reaction, so uh, the lower our health, the more damage we do. Um, not necessary by any means here. We even don't have uh, all that much situations where we are at low health. doesn't really happen, so you, can, you might as well live without it, but I just included it anyway because it doesn't really hurt us here. Then we do have the Grounded Mutation. Um, pretty simple. Uh, we do get extra energy resistance, which might not be all that useful or wait, necessary. Uh, it's a bit of a drop on a hot stone. Uh, but on the other side, the downside uh, from the mutation is absolutely irrelevant to us. Uh, minus 12% energy gun damage. In actuality, it's minus uh, 50, but we do have the class freak mutation. Yeah, uh, we don't use any energy guns, so we might as well have that. Uh, mutation. Then we do have Marsupial, uh, pretty good all-rounder here, more jump height, more carry weight, pretty straightforward. Um, the debuff is one uh, intelligence, but with class freak that is, but yeah, we can live with that. We do have relatively high intelligence. Um, then we do have Scaly Skin, similar to uh, Grounded. The benefits aren't too crazy, uh, 50 damage and energy resistance won't, will hardly be noticeable, but um, since the debuff to it, which doesn't really appear here, uh, is just uh, minus 12 action points. To be honest, also very negligible, so we might as well drop that mutation on as well. Um, then we do have Speed Demon, which, uh, yeah, the reload speed we don't use whatsoever since we don't have a weapon that has to be reloaded, but the extra movement speed in and of itself is enough for me to make the mutation worth it and especially since the only debuff is uh, hunger and thirst growing faster and yeah I don't really rely on uh, being well fed or hydrated uh, except for certain builds where I might need some more AP refresh but don't really have the points to invest into action boy or so or um, yeah if I already have a overeater set of armor I want to be very tanky and be uh, quite uh, well fed and uh, well hydrated all the time then maybe Speed Demon might not be the best decision but I pretty much always have it. And lastly we do have Twisted Muscles for extra melee damage pretty self-explanatory here and a chance to cripple which is pretty nice since we're swinging relatively fast we do have a medium swing speed um, but we do have the swing speed um, legendary effect and we do have obviously Martial Artist so yeah, we do have a lot of attacks and therefore a lot of chances to cripple, which comes in very handy once we're fighting tougher enemies. And lastly, we do have unstable isotope here just because, just because. There's no real downside to it. Um, if we're getting attacked by a melee attacker, we have a chance to irradiate them. Um, this is this little mushroom cloud. I'm pretty sure it went off like once or twice during the uh, video. So yeah. It can do a little bit of damage, mostly it doesn't, and uh, on some occasions it can actually heal your enemies, but uh, who gives a crap, you know, like, it's a cool little aesthetic, so I like it. Um, in terms of special I shown it off earlier, um, the noticeable thing here is, I really wanted to see how high, since I already was on custom worlds, uh, I want to see how high I can get my strength with little effort, just with the right equipment and perks. So we do have three legendary strength, which we will see uh, soon. Um, and the rest is 15 base strength, um, adding up to 18. Then we do have um, overdrive servos on our legs, meaning that we get another 2 um, strength. Then we do have, um, I don't know how the uh, 
torso modification is called at the moment, but it's also the one giving us extra strength. And lastly, we do have five pieces of legendary power armor um, that give us one strength each. So that was basically the goal here. Uh, in terms of endurance, we are at 15, and yeah, the rest here is not too interesting, I guess. Moving on to our equipment, here it is, the centerpiece, basically, uh, our only weapon, a executioner, swing speed, cultist blade, and 50% more damage when you're tar uh, sorry, and 40% uh, less damage while power attacking. So, overall, executioners and swing speed, I mean, swing speed, hands down the best effect for legend, uh, legendary melee weapons. Um, then we do have executioners, which is always a nice uh, addition. But especially on, on a faster swinging weapon, I would argue it's more valuable than on a uh, hard-hitting weapon like, for example, a super sledge. Uh, also still multiplicative, which makes it very good, in my opinion. And lastly, we do have um, taking less damage while power attacking, which isn't really necessary. As I said, we're already really tanky, but I found myself power attacking quite often with this weapon, and therefore, yeah, might as well have that. Um, to be honest, there's not a lot we could actually use otherwise. Obviously, one more strength would be nice. Um, other than that... Hmm. Breaking slower could be interesting, but not a problem either. <coughs> we lost about 20% condition factoring in that our weapon was repaired over 100% when we started. So, yeah, it, it holds pretty long, but we do have makeshift warrior. And that brings us to our power armor. As you can see here already, our main legendary effects are quite all over the place, just because, yeah, I was only looking for uh, extra strength on all of the pieces. So we do have two autostim pieces, all two stars, by the way, just because I didn't want to get too overpowered by just crafting all three star stuff. Um, two autostim strength pieces, uh, one would obviously be enough, but two might as well. Um, then we do have one cloaking piece. Uh, this one's actually 3-star, I uh, just see, but hardly overpowered. I mean, it's cloaking with slowly regenerating radiation outside of combat, which is also unnecessary just because we already do have, um, I think at least, uh, ghoul, not ghoulish what rats, but yeah, yet again, we do have extra strength. Um, then we do have our helmet um, database, just means we're getting a little bit more intelligence, and to be honest, I wasn't really sure what I wanted here, and this was one of the uh, modifications I could actually do, so I thought might as well have some more intelligence. There's nothing we desperately needs, need in terms of modifications for the helmet. Um, it's the Marauder uh, skin, by the way, just because I didn't remember earlier. And, yeah, standard headlamp. Uh, I'm not even sure if there are other headlamps for the, uh, for the uh, Strangler Hard Power Armor. Then we do have um, a, another strength uh, power armor piece this one here regenerates health outside of combat which is an effect that if, if you never bought it with it sounds nice on paper but it's it's hot garbage it's really bad uh, like there's a mutation healing factor which actually heals you quite fast i once made a build with a full set of regenerating armor and it was painfully slow um like yeah don't bother with it and lastly, we do have a Troubleshooter's piece uh, with extra strength, and yeah, Troubleshooter's probably the best piece in the whole set, so just because, yeah, a lot of Mr. Gutsies, when they overwhelm you, that can actually be a bit troublesome, um, but yeah, uh, having less damage from robots is just a nice thing, I guess. And that's it in terms of our equipment, and let's now take a look at our perks. So, as you can probably imagine, we do have 15 strength, and we do have 3 gladiator, 2 master gladiator, and 1 gladiator. Um, now, feel free to combine these as you wish. Uh, you could also go for 2 in each rank, or 3 in 2 ranks, and 1 in uh, the last one. Nah, that wouldn't work. Uh, <laughs> anyways. Um, yeah, not quite maxed out, but it's enough here. The main reason is, um, I do have a ton of stim packs on me. Uh, and yeah, I did need traveling pharmacy. Now, I could have just dropped all of my stuff just because we're in custom world. I mean, this character here is very tanky, so carrying around something like 20, maybe 25 stim packs it should be more than enough for pretty much every single situation. So you can just 
leave our traveling pharmacy and then use it for all the gladiator perks but on the other side um that damage bonus wouldn't be too crazy you're missing out on 15 percent um additional uh, additive damage sounds good but yeah we have bloody mass and it does basically nothing it's like eight points of damage or so um, then we do have Incisor and Martial Artist. These, will, uh, these two will give us way more DPS than all of the other three uh, uh, Gladiator perks. So firstly, ignoring 75% of your target's armor. That's great. I had big hopes that this would also um, benefit our acid damage, but um, it doesn't. At least it seems like it doesn't. Uh, I also tried it with anti-armor weapons, hoping that those would uh, help in making the poison damage actually, um, acid damage actually effective, but yet again, seemed to not work that way, uh, seemed to not make a difference, so sadly, bit of a bummer, but still, uh, for our damage itself, when it comes to our weapon, this is great, and lastly, we do have martial artists, I mean, our items weigh a little bit less, our melee weapons, uh, which is nice, but... Uh, the main thing here is 30% faster swing speed, for obvious reasons. Then we have Perception, and just because we had some points left, uh, we put them into uh, Glow Sight. Um, so obviously one Perception would be more than enough for a melee character. But on this occasion, I wanted to go for Glow Sight. For some reason, I thought it was kind of fitting for a Cultist character. Uh, can't explain why, it's just a little bit of a goofy thing here, and can be quite helpful. Um, think about Nuke Zones. Uh, for example, if you want to farm the White Spring area, nuke it, and kill a lot of uh, legendary glowing ghouls, um, this will come in very handy. Then we do have Endurance, and all I wanted to have here is very high Endurance, obviously, just so we can be very tanky. Now, the interesting thing here is Fireproof, as always, and then I'm uh, thrown in some chem uh, perks, so we are resistant to becoming addicted, as well as having our chems last longer, just... If we want to use them, think about Fury or Psycho buff um, here. Not that you need to, though. Um, then we do have Ghoulish. This is a bit of a, a drop on a hot stone as well, just because, yeah, as I said, we are uh, we do have very high radiation resistance. And therefore, it might seem like Ghoulish doesn't do anything for you, but um, the real thing here is, in Nuke Zones, it's just the sweet spot. I tried it out, uh, where... You will get irradiated enough so you have constant healing going on. It's not a lot, but since you are so tanky, you're not getting a lot of damage as well. So in nuke zones, you are really getting just a little bit more tanky and you feel it. It, it, that, it is a noticeable difference. It's, it's a lost perk for a lot of situations, but um, yeah. Close around fissure sites and within nuke zones, you actually see a good de benefit here. And lastly, we do have Life Giver. Uh, I know a lot of people don't really like it because 45 extra HP doesn't seem like a lot, and it isn't. It's a lot of perk points uh, invested here. But on the other side, I always feel like Endurance doesn't offer the greatest perks in the world, uh, especially on a power armor character. So therefore, yeah, might as well take f more hit points. And in, in addition to that, yeah, you also have to consider that you're raising your Endurance to get this perk. So. It's in all actuality, um, for example, if you would play the, the build and not bother with Life Giver, going down to 11 Endurance, you're not only missing out on those 45 hit points, you're also missing out on the uh, 20 hit points you're getting from these five, uh, four more Endurance, making it overall 65. I think you get the point. Then we do have Charisma here, Tenderizer, pretty straightforward pick, 10% multiplicative damage. So... I just remembered some of you, uh, uh, just because I mentioned it in, I think, my latest or video, build video at least. Um, yeah, recently Tier made a really good breakdown of Tenderizer effect and how you can stack it up to 40%. I really advise you to look at that video. Um, I don't feel like I have to include a link, to be honest. I mean, you guys watching a channel with 80 followers, so you know who Tier is and you've probably even seen the video. <coughs> but yeah, you can get more out of the Tenderizer perk with other weapons. On this occasion, we just have our 10%, but still 10% multiplicative damage is nice. Uh, especially if you're going to uh, kill your enemy and you're going to eventually reach 40% health. Um, 
these 10 percent multiplicative damage then add up with 40 percent uh 50 percent multiplicative damage from the executioner's effect so that combination makes it really powerful then we have 11 intelligence um what we went for here is makeshift warrior just so our weapon breaks way slower we're using a lot of swings so uh without it repairing your weapon is quite of a hassle um then we do have power user just because to be honest there's no good reason here uh, you might as well want to use batteries included in order to carry more fusion cores. Um, the character isn't really consuming fusion cores too uh, too fast. Um, I just went for the option to say, hey, um, since we're already not using up our energy uh, from our fusion cores too fast, um, double down on that, use power user and don't have to bother with it. Uh, I started this build with uh, four fusion cores and as you see down there, uh, or so earlier, I still have four fusion cores. Not uh, have not picked up a single one during my gameplay. By the way, uh, we're talking about something like I would guess six to eight hours uh, of gameplay uh, was a rather quick build, but still. Um, and yeah, just due to the fact that you're using so little uh, fusion core uh, power, and you get it reloaded every now and then by fighting super mutants with energy weapons or assaultrons and so on. Yeah, basically one fusion core would be enough. Pretty much always. And lastly, we do a first aid here. Sinks in very well with our born survivor uh, legendary effect. Uh, not legendary effect, um, perk. And our auto stim legendary effects on the power armor. So yeah, um, just further adds to our tankiness and not having to use too much stim packs. Then we do have agility, which is at 13. Um, I didn't really need to go higher. I do like to do a lot of power attacks, and especially if I'm sprinting up to enemies, sometimes I do run out of power armor, but um, I never felt like power attacks were too necessary here, and especially if we're going against one single target, we do get a lot of power attacks out of a single AP bar, so therefore, yeah, 12 was enough. Uh, we do have Action Boy just to refresh them faster. Um, then we have the further mentioned uh, Burn Survivor at rank 3, which is hardly ever necessary, especially on this case, since uh, we do have two autostim pieces and are very tanky. Um, you would still be very much um, close to invincible uh, without this perk, just because, yeah, as I said, we're tanky and have uh, two autostim pieces uh, combined with first aid. But this just seals the deal. Um, having one stim pack going off at 40% uh, health most of the time that's enough to just bring you out of any situations uh situation we are very rarely going down to 40 percent um really the only situations where i noticed that happening uh was when i was fighting hordes of maybe yaogwai that could stagger me um or uh hordes of um armor penetrating mr gutsies and yeah at 40% health, this helps us, and if there are actually a situation or enemies that can out-damage us during this healing process, we still have another backup at 20% health, uh, at which point we are probably having the effect of three stim packs at once. So, yeah, really tanky. Uh, and lastly, we do have Adrenaline. Uh, always a good pick if you have the points for it, so not a lot to say here. Uh, as you can see, by the way, this adds up to 11 points and not 12, so there would be room for one more point, um, which you could spend for whatever you like. Um, I really forgot about it, to be honest, but yeah, nothing you desperately need. Another thing you could do here is go for uh, rank 1 of Born Survivor and have another 3-star another perk, but yeah, do whatever you like here. And lastly, we do have luck at 8. Uh, we do have Bloody Mass, which I already said before, it doesn't do a whole lot. Um, we will actually look at it in a second, um, just to give you an example of how much 15% uh, additive damage is actually on a melee weapon. Uh, then we do have Class Freak at rank 3. Um, as you saw there, we have quite a lot of mutations. To be honest, the downsides of them wouldn't be too dramatic, even if we're not using uh, Class Freak, but I still decided to go for it. On melee builds, I often think it's a good idea. And lastly, we do have star genes, not a lot to say here. We want to keep our mutations and not get any new ones. And yeah, just to make sure here, this is our weapon, 127 damage. And now we're taking off bloody mess, so 15% additive damage less. And we have 121. So 
uh, we're talking about a whole six damage. That's because of one thing I always complain about when it comes to melee weapons, which is that strength is also additive, meaning the base damage of your weapon that gets buffed uh, from all the gladiator perks, bloody mass, and so on, is the damage your weapon would do unmodified, which in case of the cult's blade is pretty much always, and on a character with only one strength. And that's the problem. Like, melee weapons do very little damage when you're using them on a character with only one strength, and that's your basis for all of your buffs, which is kind of devastating, to be honest. But anyways, let's go on to our legendary perks here. We do have legendary agility, luck, intelligence, and strength, as you can see, except for intelligence, which is at rank 4, giving us 5 extra intelligence. Uh, we have the rest at 3. I really scrapped all, uh, scrapped all of my excess uh, legendary perks, just because uh, perk cards, just because I am on custom worlds. This progress doesn't carry over, so I can really show you a little bit of a, of a more maximized build. And it still wasn't enough to max them all out. Obviously, the first one I would have liked to max out would be strength, just to give me um, overall 27 strength rather than 25. But has to do for now. Um, yeah. Just gives us access to more perks, to be honest. Um, then we do have Electric Absorption here. Um, rank 2, already enough. I mean, obviously, go for more if you want to have even more benefits to it. But 13% chance to um, gain health from an energy attacking you with an energy weapon. That's pretty good. Makes you basically immortal when you're fighting against, uh, as I said, the Soltrons. Um, you're also seeing good benefit from it when you're fighting groups of uh, super mutants, just because they tend to every now and then carry uh, laser rifles and they do heal you quite good as well. Or um, raider cultist uh, bosses in power armor often wield gatling lasers or flamers. Those make you pretty much invincible as well. And lastly, we do have taken one for the team. Uh, don't often use it, despite it being very good. Uh, on this occasion, I went through with it, though and uh, also have been on a team, all by myself that is, but still, um, giving us 40% um, multiplicative damage against enemies that are attacking us. And yeah, that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed the build, guys. And despite my big rant and being so disappointed with the power armor itself, the build was really uh, enjoyable. I had a lot of fun with it. Just the feeling of playing it was really nice. Uh, not quite decided which one of these uh, two pictures will be the thumbnail. I, I'm going for this one, uh, despite not being too sharp. But, yeah. Anyways, see you next time, guys. Bye.